Let's, so let's talk a little bit about what uh, the legislators are wrangling with right now and looking at the tax cut. It's funny, there was a poll out today, the Epic MRA poll that was in your paper in the pre-press today, saying that people, that is very, very low on their that, list, yeah. only about 11%, but the majority of people, the first off was K through 12. They want more infusion of cash there. But the second was roads, and um, you can't blame anybody who's been driving around <laughs> on any of these roads. That That's where they want a lot of that surplus to go towards. Do you think lawmakers are going to, to listen to them, which is interesting. You think they should in election year. But they seem to be still trumpeting this tax cut. They're looking for something to go and say, this is what I did for you. Right. And I agree. I think as long as you have roads in this condition, as long as you have universities underfunded, uh, you don't really have a surplus. I mean, you, you've got money you just tell them, haven't put on the right priorities. These roads are awful. And these, this, these lawmakers have absolutely no courage in terms of saying, we've got to find a revenue stream for that. This is one of the few times I agree with Steve in that we need more money. <laughs> right. Hang on, let me write it down, write it down. We need, to spend, down, down. We need <laughs> to spend our road yeah. money better, yeah. yes. but we, right. we're, I think we're last per capita in road spending in the country, and our roads reflect that. Yeah. Do you think this winter will end up a little bit of a mind shift then? For people on where they want to put it. If you're if you're the governor, uh, the, there is no better ally you have uh, in this fight. Than right this now, terrible than the winter, yeah. Uh, you know, this is reminding people of how little we've we've taken care of these roads. The the sad thing is, this is the same conversation we just had about the Detroit water system, right? Uh, uh, this is a state and a, a, a southeast Michigan in particular that has really sold itself short in terms of investment. Uh, and now the bills are due and, and you know, you've got cars under four feet of water in southwest Detroit because mains are, are, are bursting. You've got, you know, Greenfield between eight and nine mile is just, it's, it's one big pothole, oh, the God. whole yeah. thing. Uh, and you're gonna see that open up all over uh, this community because we don't but pay enough. It's, it's not been be like spring. that now for decades. And, and you know, I spoke uh, recently, not long ago, to a group in Macomb County. I said, how many of you all think we need to spend more on roads? Every hand went yeah. up. How many of you all would support a higher gas tax? Whoop, not everyone's put hand. their hand down. How many would a higher, and on and on, sales tax, yeah. registration fees. They, I, you know, the concept is there that we need to spend more, but nobody wants it's, to It's hard for more. people to, to step out and say that they want to spend more. All right, I want to uh, shift gears real quick and take a look at the uh, U.S. Senate race. Is uh, It's starting to get the wheels rolling a little bit here between Gary Peters and Terry Lynn Land. I know that there was a poll out, it was a pretty partisan poll, that gave Terry Lynn Land a little bit of an edge there, but it's shaping up to be a close race. What are you, what are you hearing so far, Nolan? Well, in the last five polls, I mean, there have been partisan polls on both sides, including... Uh, the, they all the, say it's close. The, mm -hmm. They all say it's about even. The last... Every poll this year, she's been up by two or three points. So right now, I think the polls are reflecting the partisan alignment of the state, but also her sort of stronger name recognition from having been Secretary yeah. of State. But she's got going for her now, I think, the two key commodities in politics. Money, she is raising a ton of money. Uh, AFP, Americans for Prosperity, just did a $1.2 million spend on her behalf. That's not money she raised. That's you know, sort of off the Third books. Party. One point two million. Dollars and another spent. one coming. This race is drawing attention because draw attention. because uh, the national party, the national, and the people who support uh, conservatives and Republicans believe she's got a shot at winning, and that this could be the Republicans' fifty-first vote. I mean, she stayed even with fundraising, even in the polls. I think that means you're going to see just an outrageous amount of money slide into oh, the yeah. state. What uh, What does Gary Peters need to do, and what kind of tone? Do you think he's going to start to say? Well, I mean, he's got to start. He's got to start getting his name out, uh, out state. He can't get, you know, he doesn't have to win out state. He's going to win Oakland County, and and typically, uh, particularly if you're a Democrat, if you can win Oakland County, you're going to win a statewide uh, race in Michigan. But you can't get wiped out uh, in Grand Rapids. You can't get wiped out. Uh, up north. Uh, he's got to start really working uh, that end of it, and he's got to start exposing her weaknesses. Uh, Terry Lynn Land is a, a very good candidate in a lot of ways. Uh, some ways it, she's good from a distance, and when you look closer, uh, there's a lot of policy weakness, uh, the social conservatism uh, that, that, that she's associated with. Those things are out of line with what the majority of voters in the state tend to, tend to want. He's got to start uh, poking at her a little bit. All right, last uh, little bit of news to talk about. So uh, we spent $1.1 million on Kwame Kilpatrick's defense. It's the Constitution, it's man. It's the Constitution. Right? So we paid yeah, about that much for his defense attorneys. Adequate defense. What I'd love to see is the bill for the prosecution, how much we <laughs> actually spend as taxpayers in the time and that's in the U.S. Attorney's amount. Office. We, we never calculate that amount, but 
you know, the, the, the amount of money Kwame Kilpatrick has cost this community, this state, and this, you know, this federal government, it, it, it's now into the tens of millions of dollars. And, you know, just one corrupt politician, the damage they can do. So uh, can we finally declare this show a Kwame Free Zone? I think with this story, are we finally, no, are we finally he'll still, done? He'll, be, he'll start writing people letters and stuff in prison, and that'll make the paper. But the appeals are going to cost, I mean. Well, right. He's still, right. Got, he's still got quite a bit to go. All right. Well, thanks so much, gentlemen. <laughs> we'll see you next week. And that is going to do it for my week. Thanks so much for joining us. Make sure you check out myweek.org for news during the week and all the shows that you might have missed. We're also on Facebook and we're on Twitter at My Week. So you don't have to wait until next Thursday night for your My Week fix. I'm Christy McDonald. Have a great night and we'll see you next week. Take care. Business Leaders for Michigan is dedicated to making Michigan a top 10 state for jobs, personal income, and economic growth. Learn more at businessleadersformichigan.com. Funding is also provided by Delta.